let's take a look at how to build something like this. This is the old code here. So we've got a pen box, a, a remesh, and a smooth. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all this stuff for now. What we want instead is a plane, AKA a rectangle. And we can just go ahead and for now, we'll be doing a lot of like plugging in and unplugging as we test this step-by-step. -step. Let's go ahead and run it. Here is our temp mesh. There is our plane. And it's just going to be uh, two triangles. So we need to do a remesh on there. And every time I compile this, it's going to reset the value back. So rather than rather than relying on this, I'm just going to go ahead and, and hard code a value now. And at the end, we can go ahead and, and set up whatever UI stuff we want to expose. So this is going to be uniform options. We'll use the target triangle count. Save it. I believe everything is still plugged in. We can run this. And now we've got a denser mesh. Great. Okay. So the next thing that we want to do is I'm going to add a displace. And you can see one of the options here is going to be apply displace from texture map. And the texture map that we want to use is this black and white image right here. So I can simply drag and drop it for now. And we need to add some options for our displacement. So a magnitude of one is going to change the geometry, but only just a very little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to 10. Again, ultimately we'll want to probably expose that out here potentially. So let's go ahead and run it. Great. Okay. Let me slow my camera down a bit. So we can see it's a little bit pixelated and not that smooth because of the low resolution here of the plane. So I'm going to come over and we'll just set this to like 100,000. Compile and save. Run that one more time. Looking better. Great. Well, what you can see here is it's actually just taking Everywhere that it's black and leaving it flat and everywhere that it's white, it just extrudes it in a sharp ramp. So we're getting a single row of faces here and it's not going to be very nice. So we're ultimately going to need to do a voxelize operation on this. So if you type in voxelize, we're going to get this apply mesh solidify node. Go ahead and drop that in the chain here. And once again, grab the options. And then we've got our grid parameters. That's what we actually want to be modifying here. Collapse all this stuff. So this is going to be exactly the same as it was in the demo on the modeling side. You can use grid resolution or you can use grid cell size. I'll use the resolution and I'll set this to 128. And we can compile and save, run it again. It'll get rid of this 2D plane as it did before. So now you can see we're starting to get that geometry. But if I take a look at the other side, it's probably not going to be super clean. It doesn't look too bad to be honest with you, but let me go ahead and uh, we'll turn off the wireframe now. So we can clean that up a bit. So the way that I'm going to clean it up, I think I'm going to have to increase my, ultimately increase my voxel density, but not while I'm testing. So uh, what I want to do is I'm going to append two cubes or at least one cube. The front actually looks pretty, pretty good. So maybe we'll just do one on the back. So we're going to append a cube in the back, have it overlap a little bit and then do a Boolean operation. So we get a nice clean cut back here. So to do that, we're going to go back to our dynamic mesh pool and we're going to request a new mesh. And with this new mesh, we're going to 
append a box. Let's be a little bit more organized about this. So with this box, I'll leave all of the, the transform information as it is by default, but I will make a transform here so we can kind of see what's going on. And I could make a vector and plug it in, or you can just right click and go to split struct pin because ultimately we're gonna to need to modify the Z value here. And I will show you why in just a moment. So now we're, we've got this new box that we've appended to our new mesh. I'm gonna grab the original mesh here and we're just gonna pull off and type in append because ultimately I need to feed this into the save dynamic mesh function. So I'm gonna grab append mesh. So this append mesh is coming from our original mesh, the extruded mesh. And what I'm going to append is my box, just like that. And you can see it's got an append transform here. So I think probably this transform could happen on either side, but uh, for now, we actually want to plug this in, although it may be the same. Let's compile and save. And what we will find is our geometry is inside of our new box. So there's our box. If I fly inside, we should see, yeah, there's the geo. Okay, so that's not exactly what we want. Looks like the, the actor is inheriting that rotation, right? So I'm actually gonna just zero that back out because I, I would prefer not to have any additional inputs other than what I'm getting from my geometry scripting. Okay, so what I wanna do is I need to move this box down and this is a one by one box, which means it's gotta go down Oops, sorry, wrong direction. Negative 100, we'll hit compile and save. And run it again. All right. So maybe right at that boundary isn't exactly what we want. So let's make, try moving it down negative 95. So we do get a little bit of overlap because what I'm interested in here is a nice clean cut. We can double check what that looks like. Okay, that's probably too much. I guess that's probably our extrusion amount, right? So that's why it's a good idea to test this stuff step by step. Put it at 99. Definitely easy to adjust if necessary. Cool. All right, so now rather than appending that mesh, what I wanna do is a Boolean operation. So let me just remove all that stuff. So here's our box. Here is our original extruded mesh. So I'm gonna pull off from that and we'll type in apply mesh Boolean. So our target mesh is the one that we're operating on. Our tool mesh is the one that we're using to do the chopping. And, or in this case, I mean, in this case, it's a, a subtract, but it could be anything. You could be combining them if you wanted. So we'll go ahead and plug that in like so. All right. And now if we look at the back, it's nice and clean. Great. So at this point, I'm pretty happy with it. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do one more operation before we convert it into a rotate mesh. And we want to rotate it. Let me go to details. Looks like 90 degrees in X and 90 degrees in Z. And that's just so it looks good relative to this little corner, right? Like your, your values may be different. Let me zero out my actor rotation. Okay, so you can see it's like a little bit chunky and that's easy enough to resolve. We just need to increase our, probably our initial remesh values. It's at 100K now, if it was at 500K and then we did a remesh on it. And then ultimately you would probably wanna do a reduction as well, but I have already showed you, I think, enough here to uh, cover the, the basics. I wanna go ahead and probably expose some of those things in the UI. 
So I'll do that offline and then just show you real quick what it looks like. Okay, remesh try count set to 100,000, max range 500K, minimum value 500, and then voxel resolution 128 with uh, 16 as the minimum value and 512 as the max value. And then usually if there's some values that I want to be looked at by a user, I will put them above the button. And I also updated the name of the button here to extrude textures. So let's see. Uh, and then in graph, uh, right, Fox res, that's just going to get plugged in over here. So we get the value. Now we just plug it in. It's going to go to truncate it, make it from a float to an int. And then yeah, the other one, I think, here we go. I need to grab that one. Try count. And then and we'll do that. Compile and save. Okay. So currently what we're doing is we're saying, hey, this one texture that I plugged in manually in the graph, that's the one that we're going to operate on. What we're going to look at in the next video is how to operate on a collection, right? So like if I have 10 different textures in here and I want to do the same thing to all of them, how can we make this a little bit more automatical so we don't have to manually plug that texture in? Or, or even if I were to expose that as a variable, even that's kind of a, a little bit of a, a manual process. So we'll take a look at that in the next video.